Hi there guys, I'm Steve your host and this is a show where we talk only about games and gaming industry. Today I want to talk to all of you about a very special company that had at the time one of the best games in the world. Now if you were thinking about Westwood and Red Alert, Command and Conquer, you are right. So today I want to talk to you a little bit, some flashback from, from, from the past about what a company once had and when, where they were in the gaming industry at the time when the PC market was the, the hottest market and um, what actually happened there. So to understand a little bit where uh, Westwood as a company, uh, back in those days, in, in 1985, when they started developing games, it was quite different than today. Uh, those uh, upfront costs to develop a game were much higher. Um, it was not so accessible to everybody. You didn't have so many developers, so many designers. You didn't have so many publishers. You didn't have so many services. Most of the things you um, had to do in-house. I'm talking like this is guys like almost 40 years ago. So uh, back in those days it was much different than today. Anyhow, uh, the company in early 90s released a game Command and Conquer. They had a few games similar that were not so popular, but they had Command and Conquer and uh, they were acquired by Virgin Games at the time. Now, that's very important later, you will know. But anyway, they were not independent studio anymore. And they worked from uh, Las Vegas. So they had a uh, very successful uh, game Command and Conquer that uh, had the sequel Red Alert 2, which was extremely successful. And um, they had a, simply the, the game was so good that they were selling like crazy millions and millions of, of, of copies uh, got sold uh, of that uh, at the time. Now, what I want to t talk to you about is how it is possible that that company got shut down uh, in uh, March in 2003 when they had their peak in 1998 Westwood had occupied 60% of the PC gaming market share think about that they had 60% of the market share in 98 that's unbelievable that's really unbelievable Another important point happened in uh, uh, 98 was that um, the company used to be owned by Virgin uh, Game Group and then got acquired by uh, Electronic Arts. Now, uh, if you ever understand uh, how the corporate world works and how the investment work and uh, shareholders, how they work, they're only f uh, profit oriented. So, uh, because at the time the company had to raise a lot of money and got acquired by Virgin Group, um, they were unable to make those decisions by themselves. They simply didn't have the control of the company. Same thing happened to Blizzard. If you all paid attention, and they, uh, of course you, you do, uh, Activision Blizzard now, it's, their IP is also gone, same like Command and Conquer. But um, what I want to point out is, it's very important that you guys understand what happened. Now I'm gonna dive to what led for them to be this abandoned by uh, Electronic Arts. Because they had such a strong IP, uh, such a strong passionate audience, um, the company very quickly after the huge acquisition of Electronic Arts has saw a new trend. There was a trend going on in the industry. At the time it was not super big, but it was growing trend. And it started in uh, 96 with the game, let's say the first game was Quake. Quake was one of those uh, first uh, uh, person shooting games. You would go around, you would shoot other people. You had in Quake 2 and especially in Quake 3 uh, Arena, that, that, that was the, the, the name, Quake, Quake 3 Arena. Um, you had that team going around shooting, killing each other and uh, constantly playing. And this was followed by uh, Half-Life, that was like pre-accessor to uh, 99, uh, Counter-Strike first version, 
Counter Strike went to be one of the most popular games later. But anyway, Electronic uh, Arts saw potential in this new, at the time, extremely new approach to, to gaming. And uh, they basically pushed uh, Westwood to bet their company on this type of new game, gaming. And uh, Westwood, with their strong IP and the strong user base, um, came out with idea uh, for the game that's going to be released in 2002nd um, called the Renegade. And what it did, it took the, all the elements from the very uh, strategic game, uh, uh, because in, back in the end of the day, Red Alert and Command and Conquer was a strategic game. You had to compete for the resources, you had to build the army, you have different kind of units, you fight each other not like StarCraft exactly, much slower, but it was uh, actually a strategic game. You had to like understand your opponent, see what they do, you have to analyze your own troops, things like that. And um, it was strategic games. They tried to translate that IP into a new game in Mon that was actually first person shooter running anywhere. And um, it was extremely complicated task to, to do. Uh, you have to shift the entire team who is all the time focused because if you talk to the people who made uh, Command and Conquer and especially Red Alert, they will tell you they were so passionate about the game that they would stay after work, they would be in the weekends in the office, they simply lived and made game. That's how much they were passionate about the game. So when, when, when the uh, Electronic Arts pushed them to make the new one, there was like back and forth a lot in the team itself. And um, that brings us to the next point, is right after they released the game, a lot of copies got sold, extremely big negative feedback. Because the previous games, like I was talking about Quake or um, Unreal, Unreal also had a, a popular game that came out in uh, a, a 98. Uh, that, that's Unreal, that's actually later became Unreal Tournament, and uh, that's today uh, Epic's, uh, Epic Games uh, engine, Unreal Engine. Uh, that game was extremely popular at the time, and they had a sequel, like I mentioned, I think 2003, 2004, uh, Unreal Engine also came out. So th th there were many kind of companies rushing to this space. That was like mobile games uh, five, six, seven years ago. Everybody were rushing to mobile games at the time, um, trying to make a big next big mobile game. And in this time, there was a transition, everybody were rushing to the first person shooter. And uh, what the Renegade should have been was uh, actually, they should have built something more like a battlefield approach which they did in a sense but the, with their ip from common and conquer and everything made it too complicated to play at first because the, the people who used to play first person shooter simply did not um, expect to have so many in, in complications they were just willing to run around and shoot each other basically counter strike which was the, the most popular one or um, uh, quake and unreal later so the, the, the entire company that was so good at making strategic games for PC was simply cut off and moved to do next big thing. This shows you uh, how the, well, if you're working in a big company or you're working in some giant company, decisions are, are made not based on passion and, and, and um, uh, what, what you think people want, they're made based on numbers. And uh, they saw probably that the strategic games are going to stagnate, so they didn't want to keep this team doing that. They instead wanted to go and uh, push them to innovate uh, or join that trend. And that resulted in the best company in the world who attracted all the talent building strategy games to simply vanish. because. Some people got later transferred to other offices, moved around uh, when they were not working anymore on what they liked. So, uh, another important point, Renegade, even as a big failure, has produced in 2014, 
Renegade X, another version of the game made by fans. That just simply some group of fans got together and said, you know guys, we love that the franchise, we know the game was too ahead of its time when it was launched, let us make another one, let's make it open and uh, certain amount of people are even playing that game till this day so um, if you are now sitting and you're thinking about what kind of game should you build you are sitting with your 10 uh, people I don't know you have a few designers few programmers few marketing guys and you're thinking what kind of game you should uh, start to build or what, what kind of game would be next uh, definitely the one you will feel most passionate about because think about this uh, if you have only one chance to build only one game, what that game would be. Now, when you know which game you want to build, make sure you have enough resources. Funding, partnership, good talent next to you, and people who want to build the same game. Try to attract. If you want to build a, a, something similar like Command & Conquer, try to attract all the people you know who are already in the game industry and want to see that game made. And, of course, if you're building a game, try to build IP. Building IP with your game is the single best revenue generator going forward. If you're just going to take someone else's IP, simply your game is not going to be the wildest, most biggest success. I hope this small analogy helped you guys. I'm planning to do more of the videos with much deeper analogies. So let me know what you think and uh, see you in the next show. Take care guys and see you.